uh, kick every time. It's a good way to go, but it's uh, more extreme, I think, in the classical technique than uh, in the skating. Do you think it's more effective to be more upright as opposed to be a little bit more over your skis? How the track uh, is these days, I think so. The pressure to the, to the snow is much uh, harder. Well, there's uh, our Brazilian friend. Congratulations to Helio Freitas. It's taken him uh, 57 minutes and 29 seconds. But who cares about the time? Remember what Inge said to you? He only put a pair of cross-country skis on his feet three weeks ago. And I think that is amazing. And it just shows you what can be done. Yeah, so we can start we also, uh, David. But we have to uh, wait until next uh, next year, I think. If you are looking at the results from 1.8 kilometers, we still have Tudorud Hofstein the lead, only four tenths of a second in front of Lukas Power. From uh, Czechia, Ulaina Bjørndal is number three. We have Vincent Vitons, as we can see, up on fifth place, only 2.4 seconds behind Tudorud Hofstein. Yeah, Vito, who said uh, that this is going to be uh, um, an exploration for him. He needs to come back. He needs to find out how he really stands after all the problems. Now, Teichmann looking uh, quite fluent, I must say. But it's not fast enough for uh, Oxy Teichmann. Oh, yes. Well, 2.5 seconds. I wouldn't uh, present that that's as a, a... That's a good. And he is faster than faster uh, during the race. So I think uh, the opening is very good, both for uh, Vitos and for Axel Teismann. Yeah, disappointing morning for the uh, Germans in the women's race. Evi Sackenbacher, the best, at uh, 18th place and uh, a minute and 33 seconds behind Katarina Neumannova. So they'll be hoping for some consolation. But Lars Berger, I must say, uh, going well. Yeah, both he and uh, Katlakowski from, uh, from Finland. They are coming up to 12 kilometers, those two guys, and they are still in the lead. We also have Martin Nebaitisak up to 1.8 kilometers, the same time as Axel Teismann, number six, 2.5 seconds behind the Tour de And This is where the uh, coaches, particularly in the time trial, this is where their almost like splits are so vital. And up to 4.3 kilometers, we have a new man in the lead, Pietro Pile Cotre, 2.6 seconds in front of Lars Bergi. And we also have Torrid Hofstad up there, 4.3 seconds behind the Italian. Well, the Italians who uh, really had uh, an awful lot of bad luck, if you remember in Val di Fiemme, they had flu and colds all through the team and uh, it really did affect everybody and uh, you always want to do well on home snow and it's the Germans who've got that pressure here to uh, bring the medals it, it's fair to say that in the space of what uh, five years Jochen Bele who's the uh, spiritual leader the, uh, the motivator as well as the uh, head coach for the German team he's done an absolutely fantastic job yeah yes but we also believe that when he overtook the, the German team, uh, as you say, five, six years ago. He was a good skier himself and he was also a very good leader. So there's a, a snapshot of the man up the first climb there and you could see uh, really three seconds, uh, not a problem. Anybody who's uh, three to four seconds off the pace at this stage wouldn't yeah. be a problem. We have descent uh, number 13 after 1.8 kilometer, only 4.7 seconds behind. However, don't underestimate Dicenza because remember he had a really strong finish in Weidenwinkel. The only thing that he flagged up as a concern is whether he could actually produce that sort of finish twice in the space of a week. Which begs the question, if he thought he was that good, why did he do it in right in Winkel? Why didn't he save himself for the World Championship? I agree with you. <laughs> but after 4.3 kilometers, he is uh, 8.2 seconds behind Pietro Pellicotre, so he's still losing a little. So Lars Berger for Norway. The first of their two biathletes, double polling, really sprinting home here. And uh, but that's another. Oh, sorry, that's not him. He's sorry. coming 20 meters behind. Yeah. There uh, he's going to the finish line. Yeah, a bizarre piece of uh, direction. And we'll give you the time from Berger in a minute. 
and uh, Larsberger 35 minutes and six seconds so there is the realistic target how competitive is that he looks pretty happy with himself I must say but they don't have the timing uh, from the latest uh, starters not more than for the first four kilometers but I think he had done a strong end of his uh, race and that's uh, a little bit new for Larsberg the big question though is uh, would Christian Scheldahl have been as or more effective than uh, Lars Berger? We'll never know that of course. But uh, Scheldahl has to be I think disappointed that he's not uh, in this quartet for Norway. When you consider the race uh, that he ran behind Bacicak and uh, Chenta, I mean he's only one second behind Chenta, he was only one second behind Hoffman last Sunday. Ulana Björndalen is also going fast uh, between 5.8 km and 9.3 km, only 2.8 after Lars Berger after 10, at least 10 km. But but this Kot man is very interesting. Pila Kotra coming up to uh, 5,800 meters. Remember, that's uh, barely a, th a third of the distance. So he's uh, still going faster than Lars Berger. Did have one uh, famous victory in the uh, World Cup Tour. He's had a couple actually, but the one that uh, springs to mind is the 50 kilometer freestyle victory that he had in Oslo in 1997 and you being a Norwegian will know what an honor it is uh, when you win yeah. uh, I mean I know Norwegians talk about uh, 50 kilometers classic at the Holman Collin but do they rate 50 kilometers freestyle as, as highly yeah no yeah, no. <laughs> it's difficult to say. I, I mean, yes, but uh, the Norwegian people me that you have to do it in classical technique. I'm agree with you. Teichmann, now 7.6 seconds. Now that suggests that he's lost a couple of seconds. Yeah, he's uh, still not to reach the, the, the speed for Pietro Pille, Kotli, Axel Teichmann, losing still. Teichmann just maybe looking uh, a little heavy. Torrud Hofstede uh, skiing away from us. Number two after 5.8 kilometers, only 8.2 after Pille, Kotli, but he is uh, losing four seconds from 4.3. But it's still very close. After 4.3 kilometers, uh, Vitons is nine seconds behind the Pilecotren, and he is number 10. Uh, it just shows you how tricky these twisty turns are. Uh, you can really lose speed if you get the line, the entry wrong into the turn. But uh, Hofstadt from uh, Lillehammer, trained by uh, Christa Schurgard. He is living at uh, Lillehammer, but he's uh, from the same district as uh, me, only 50 kilometers north of Oslo, a little place called uh, Hurdal. Mm. The same place as Sending Stenser. It's a very little place, it's only 1,000 uh, people up there. And they have a ski jumper in the top of the world, and they have a cross-country ski in the top of the world. And there's uh, a view back to the uh, stadium and uh, Hofstad again trying to maintain that speed that aerodynamic tuck and this uh, last 1500 meters dropped down into the stadium we saw with the women's race this morning it's absolutely crucial races and medals can be won and lost in the last 1500 meters this man is very strong also in the second lap. He is going better and better if he in, in, is in a good form, good shape. I gather he's been taking a bit of advice from uh, Thomas Olsgaard. Yeah, they've gone a lot together. But Olsgaard uh, not here. Uh, Bjorn Daly is here on a little commercial venture. But uh, Thomas has got some business back home, hasn't he? Too much business in Norway. <laughs> he hadn't time to go to Obersurf this time. Lucas Bauer now in the second place at 5.8 kilometers, only five seconds behind Pilecotri. Bauer, who had that uh, bizarre situation, 
in uh, Sweden, if you can remember, two seasons ago, where he was going to uh, certainly win a race, but took the wrong course as he was in the stadium and uh, ended up being disqualified, which a lot of us thought was pretty tough, not only because... Uh, he took the wrong course. He actually went a longer way round to get himself back on track and uh, didn't really get the best of help. But Bauer has put that all behind him. And uh, five seconds, uh, so that's, what, 3.2 seconds ahead of Hofstad and about three seconds ahead of uh, Berger on running time. But Pietro Pilacotra, he's the revelation at the moment. Yeah, so we hope that he can uh, stay the 15 kilometers. We also seen earlier on that Pilikotra also can uh, meet the wall afterwards. Kadliakoski, now he and Berger were pretty close for the first half of the race, but you can see how much Berger found in the second part, or Kadliakoski lost, whichever way you like to examine it. But I also think that Temu Kadliakoski has done his uh, run for the life. Yeah, well, we'll wait and see whether it is a PB. Uh, certainly in championship terms and uh, the weather is changing there are flecks of snow outside our window you can see that the blue sky well if you were with us this morning you can see that the blue sky is disappearing and a little local climate is uh, returning it's not going to affect this race uh, but it just might uh, close in for the evening well, that could be good for Lars Berger if it's starting uh, snowing for the latest 50 racers. Now Teichmann, 15.8 seconds down. That's at, not bad. But uh, have a look at the comparison. I still think he's losing time. We also have uh, Vitos only 12 seconds behind the uh, pillar uh, Kotru. Ole Aina Biondalen uh, coming up here and... Uh, 10.8 seconds behind Berger. Now he was seven seconds down, so uh, again it gives you an indication of how strongly Lars Berger finished. So maybe that, uh, maybe that more sensible start, that first 1800 meters to establish his rhythm and not to go uh, crazy, maybe that uh, suggestion to him was well heeded. And we can also see that uh, Lars Berger is 10 seconds in front of uh, Olena Björndal after 8.11.8 uh, uh, kilometers. It was only 2 seconds at 9.3. So he's going very fast. We also saw it uh, when he was passing the finish line. He was very happy, Lars Berger. So Val Buza in picture now. The penultimate starter and uh, a switch straight away to uh, this time Toby Angerer. Uh, Toby Angerer, who I picked out earlier, I did say that he doesn't like running time trials. He prefers mass start races where he can be in the bunch and he can see what he has to do. And at the moment, uh, not uh, really figuring. Uh, Zorzi, not a bad run uh, at 9,000 metres, uh, 18 seconds behind Lars Berger. And he can finish a little bit as well. And also Bolchakov from uh, Russia, only 8.3 seconds behind Lars Berger. It's, this is crazy. After 5.8 kilometers, it's only 12 seconds from number one to number nine. Well, so we... It's still a possibility both for uh, Vitos and Teichmann to go to, go to the podium. But now we can see Pili is far in front of uh, Lars Berger. It's up to 9.3, after 5.8 it was uh, 8.6 seconds, now it's 17, it's a double. And he looks uh, very comfortable, it's flowing really well, uh, Pila Kotra. Hofstad for uh, Norway, who's uh, running behind uh, Pila Kotra. Half a minute. But, but uh, he is losing. You can see there's the, the zest in his skiing is yeah. just not there. He is tired uh, to the dog stuff. You can also see it uh, on his head. Yeah, when you start to see the, the head moving and the upper body moving, it's a telltale sign and 14 seconds. But uh, to be yes, fair... Lost, lost six, six seconds, not more. Pina Kotra really trying to turn the screw now. Absolutely committed uh, 
but this is the, only the first uphill in the second lap. They have the strong a little bit later. Franz Goering in his uh, first senior world championships and you can see uh, how far he is past the uh, time of Lars Berger at this point but he at 20 years of age surely can only uh, get better and uh, Goering From uh, Zelamelis, uh, again uh, the eastern part of the country, skis on uh, Atomic. Sixth in uh, right in Winkel and Björn Dahlen now at uh, 13.3 kilometers. Now, the last time we saw Björn Dahlen was 9.3 kilometers and he was uh, 20 seconds, well, he, he was actually uh, three seconds behind Berger and he's 18 seconds behind now. So uh, Björn Dahlen seemingly uh, not uh, progressing here. No podium for Rainer today. He's uh, losing and losing. And Kotlakowski from Finland also in front of him by 2.7 seconds. Well, this is an early snapshot at 5.8 kilometers, but uh, it's all changed because Peter Kotra leading Bauer by 5 seconds and uh, Peter Kotra at 9.3 leading Bauer by 9 seconds and Hofstad uh, he'd lost about 5 seconds through that point and Lars Berger at 5.8 kilometers 8 seconds down and by 9.3 kilometers the gap had widened to 17 so if Peter Kotra keeps this going well what did I say uh, 1987 the winner here was Marco Alborello for Italy it was 15 kilometers in classic style I wonder are we going to see another Italian victory here uh, at the moment uh, Peter Cotra has got this race in his hands it depends on his speed in the last uh, appeal after 11 12 kilometers Fulvio Barbuza, his uh, teammate. And uh, Peter Cotra, well, certainly uh, nobody's favourite. We haven't seen anything of uh, Matty Fredriksson of Sweden either. And uh, Pietro Peter Cotra, a 20 to 1 shot with the bookies today. And. Uh, Matis Fredriksson was number 20 after 5.8 kilometers, 26 six, six seconds behind. So back with Franz Goering to a finish. It's not a bad time by uh, this man. This is uh, a pretty respectable run, 36 seconds down from Lars Berger. But remember, as I said, I mean, he's really a baby still. He was number five, but uh, eight point. 11.8 kilometers he was then uh, 30 seconds behind Lars Berger Ulaina Björndal and uh, Björndalen well he need to uh, produce something amazing to uh, get ahead of Lars Berger it isn't going to happen he's uh, speeding around down the straight he's on the uh, far side here and you can see well past the time of uh, Lars Berger but the great uh, biathlete through the line in 35 uh, 30 into the bronze medal position at the finish Katli Akoski so uh, a lifetime best you suggested and that time even though he is in second place looking better and better I think so I think he will be a top six today So coming to the uh, decisive stages, Pietro Pilacotra uh, coming in to view very shortly. 
He was uh, up at the 11.8 kilometers. He is still 17 seconds in front of Lars Berge. It was the same at uh, 9.3 kilometers. So Peter Pellicotter may be uh, struggling a little in that steep uphill after 11 kilometers. Well, joining us in the uh, commentary box now, Danny uh, Silva from Portugal. Uh, Danny, uh, what was it like out there? You've just finished your run. Yeah, well, it was uh, quite difficult, I have to admit. Uh, tough course, but a uh, hell of a crowd, which uh, made it quite enjoyable. Um, yeah, I think, uh, as you said, uh, that hill, <laughs> when you were speaking about Valbusa, the hill is really, really tough. It takes a lot out of you. But uh, hey, I finished, and I'm really happy that I finished. And these trails here, they're big, they're wide, lots of spectators, but the hill, it's a big, long, endless climb, isn't it? Yeah, I would think it's about 350 to 400 meter climb, and it plays some tricks on you because there's some false flat parts, but they do have a slight uh, climb to it, and then it just, you hit the wall, and then uh, it becomes tougher and tougher as you go up. And can you just describe, okay, going out the first time on the lap, that's one thing you, you you've trained you know the hill but when you're racing you go around and then you've got to go around the second time how did you feel the second time <laughs> I was glad to have finished it really um, the first time you you kind of think well I have to save myself for the second round and basically well, psychologically you do t play a bit of a control game and come around the second it's all or nothing so you're not thinking about the pain anymore <laughs> and just um, a lot of people will think well you know Portugal, not sort of the country that we associate with Nordic cross-country skiing. You come from pretty close to Lisbon, don't you? Exactly. I'm from Almeria. Yeah. Uh, nice town, but no snow. <laughs> and, and what got you into the sport? How did you... Well, uh, I was doing triathlon for some time, and I presumably just got bored with it, and I really find the sport fascinating. Uh, cross-country is just unbelievable. And after uh, great commentaries from Eurosport... Uh, I just got really hooked on it and started training